Hello learners. Welcome to the concluding chapter of our exploration into the world of data analysis and predictive modeling for the retail clothing company dataset. In this final lesson, we aim to draw meaningful conclusions and insights from our journey after having already performed exploratory data analysis and building the linear regression model previously. Our primary objective here is to leverage the knowledge we've gained to make predictions and analyze their implications for our retail store's operations. Throughout our journey, we've examined various aspects of customer behavior and spending patterns, seeking to uncover correlations and trends that could guide the store's strategies by optimizing the yearly amount spent in the store by customers. By analyzing past customer behavior, we aim to predict future spending patterns, providing insights that could enhance the shopping experience for customers. Today, we will use the predictive model we've built to make estimations about how much a customer is likely to spend based on their interaction with the store, be it through the mobile app, time spent browsing the website, or their overall engagement. These predictions can offer valuable insights into tailoring marketing strategies, personalizing services, and improving customer satisfaction. While the concepts of machine learning might seem complex, the implications of our findings are real and relatable, shaping the future of customer experiences and business strategies. Now we will utilize the trained linear regression model to make predictions based on new unseen data. Predictions. This variable predictions stores the predicted values generated by the trained linear regression model when applied to the X underscore test data. These predictions are based on the learned patterns and relationships between the features in the target variable, which was previously seen during the model training phase. Equals LM dot predict. This method is part of the linear regression object, LM, that was previously instantiated and trained using the fit method. The PREDICT method is used to generate predictions from the train model. Inside brackets, x underscore test. x underscore test is the variable for the new, unseen data, that is, independent variables or features, which we split in the previous lessons. This is the data on which we want to make predictions. For our dataset, we have 150 rows, that is 30% of our total dataset, for its respective x underscore test and y underscore test. This line of code, lm.predict, x underscore test, would generate predictions for how much customers are likely to spend based on their behaviors and engagement captured in the x underscore test dataset. For instance, if x underscore test contains data, such as the time customers spend on the app or website, their average session length, and their length of membership, the predictions generated by the model would estimate the amount a customer is likely to spend based on these factors. To check these predictions, we will simply run a line, predictions. The model takes each row or entry in the x underscore test dataset and computes a corresponding predicted value for the target variable. In other words, for every row or instance in the x underscore test, the model uses the learned relationships from the training data to estimate the value of the target variable. These are all the 150 predictions made for the 150 rows in the X underscore test dataset. Now, let us compare if these predictions are accurate or close to the actual Y underscore test values corresponding to the X underscore test data entries by creating a scatter plot to evaluate the performance of a linear regression model. PLT dot scatter inside brackets predictions Y underscore test. This line of code generates a scatter plot using matplotlib, PLT, a popular Python plotting library. The scatter function creates a scatter plot, where the x-axis represents the predicted values, that is predictions that we generated in the previous line of code, and the y-axis represents the actual target values from the test set y underscore test. PLT dot x label. Inside brackets double quotes predicted values. This will set the label for the x-axis of the scatter plot. PLT dot title. Inside brackets, double quotes, evaluation of our linear regression model. This line sets the title of the scatter plot as evaluation of our linear regression model. The title offers a concise summary of the purpose of the plot, which is to assess the model's performance. The scatter plot generated here visually compares the predicted values 
generated by the linear regression model, that is the predictions, against the actual observed values from the test set, y underscore test. Each point on the scatter plot represents an individual data point, or instance from the test set. In machine learning, if the model's predictions are perfectly aligned with the actual values, all points on the scatter plot would fall along a diagonal line, indicating a perfect fit. A well-fitted model would exhibit a tight clustering of points around a diagonal line, indicating that the predicted values closely match the actual observed values. In this scenario, we can observe a very slight variance or dispersion around this ideal line. This indicates that the predictions of our linear regression model are very close to the actual values. For example, if we observe the data point from the value 500 of the x-axis, we can observe that the y-coordinate of this point is also very close to 500, which is the actual value. The distance of each point from the ideal diagonal line represents the model's prediction error residuals. Examining the distribution and spread of points can provide insights into areas where the model might perform well or struggle in making accurate predictions. This evaluation method helps in understanding the model's performance, identifying potential areas for improvement, and gaining insights into its predictive capabilities. For the retail clothing company's problem of predicting customer spending patterns, Further, we will see other analysis techniques, such as calculating evaluation metrics, for example, R-squared, mean-squared error, and examining the residuals plot, which will complement the insights gained from the scatter plot, to comprehensively assess the model's performance. For that, we will first import some required functions and modules. From sklearn.metrics import mean underscore squared underscore error mean underscore absolute, underscore, error. Firstly, we will import the mean squared error and mean absolute error functions from the scikit-learn library. These functions are used to quantify the performance of regression models by measuring the error or the difference between predicted values and actual values. Import math. The math library in Python provides various mathematical functions and constants. It will be mainly used for mathematical operations, such as computing square roots or other mathematical calculations. Mean absolute error, MAE, mean squared error, MSE, and root mean squared error, RMSE, are used to evaluate the performance of a predictive model, specifically a linear regression model, in the context of our dataset. Let us first execute these functions in order to understand its applications. Print. Inside brackets, double quotes, mean absolute error, colon, mean, underscore, absolute, underscore, error. Inside brackets, y, underscore, test, predictions. Print. Inside brackets, double quotes, mean squared error, colon, mean, underscore, squared, underscore, error. Inside brackets, y, underscore, test, predictions. Print. Inside brackets, double quotes, RMSE, colon, math, dot, SQRT. Inside brackets, mean, underscore, squared, underscore, error. Inside brackets, Y, underscore, test, predictions. Mean absolute error measures the average absolute difference between the predicted values and the actual values. Lower MAE values indicate better model performance in terms of accuracy. Think of MAE as a measure that tells us, on average, how much our prediction differs from the actual spending amount for each customer. For instance, let's say the system predicted a customer would spend $100, but the actual amount they spent was $90. That's a difference of $10. If this happens for several customers, MAE calculates the average of these differences. So if the average difference between our predictions and the actual spending amounts is $8 for each customer, then the MAE would be $8. In our original dataset, we can see that the value of yearly amount spent is roughly in the range of $500. Thus, a mean absolute error of $8 is a fairly good model evaluation. Also note that the value of mean absolute error is in the same unit as the target variable, that is dollars in this case. MSE, on the other hand, is a bit different. 
MSE also looks at the average difference between predicted and actual values, but it squares these differences before averaging them out. Lower MSE values suggest a smaller average square difference between predicted and actual values, indicating better accuracy. Squaring these differences emphasizes larger errors more than smaller ones. For example, if one prediction was off by $10 and another by $20, squaring these gives $100 and $400. Then averaging these square differences would give us the MSE. It provides a more comprehensive understanding of overall prediction accuracy, considering both large and small errors. Since our MSE is $103, it means the average square difference between predictions and actual amounts is $103. Our MSE is a commonly used metric that represents the square root of the MSE. Our MSE provides a more interpretable estimate of prediction errors and is directly in the same unit as the target variable. Lower RMSE values signify better model performance in terms of accuracy and closeness of predicted values to actual values. RMSE gives us an idea of how much, on average, our prediction might differ from the actual spending amount. In our case, it's about $10. In summary, MAE, it's an average of how much our predictions differ from the actual amounts without considering the direction of the differences. MSE, it's like MAE, but emphasizes larger errors more by squaring differences before averaging. RMSE, it's the square root of MSE, providing an interpretable estimate of average prediction errors in the same unit as our spending amounts. For our retail store scenario, lower values of MAE, MSE, and RMSE means our prediction system is closer to accurately estimating customer spending amounts based on their behavior while higher values would indicate the need for improvements in our prediction accuracy. This entire project involving data analysis and predictive modeling using linear regression greatly benefits both the data scientist and the retail company in terms of enhancing profitability. Thank you.